How's it going? PD Grizz here. Tonight I want to talk about a vintage Wenger 82 millimeter model from about 1960, 1959-ish roughly. Um, had a little trouble finding the model number of this knife. I, I believe it was either a model 11 or a model 711, but I could com be completely wrong. Couldn't find any catalog listings from before 1963. The only thing I could find before that on SackWiki is a picture of the Sportsman series, which was a, another variation of Banger Knives that was available about 1960 for a short period. Anyway, this 82 millimeter model has a nice nickel steel shackle on it with a little decorative element on the side is nice look and it moves quite freely despite the knife being nice and tight which is unusual because sometimes the way these are pinned that is the the basis of the tension for the whole knife so a loose bail sometimes is an indicator that you're gonna have loose blades but that's not the case on this one it does not have toothpick or tweezers the main blade has received heavy use it's quite worn down. It's probably about a quarter inch shorter than it originally was. It, somebody had tried to sharpen it with a, 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 a hatchet, a rock. I don't know. They put some seriously deep gouges into it. What I suspect is that they had a small sharpening stone and not a very good technique and not a lot of patience. And they probably continuously hit the corner of the stone running off the end of it and that sharp corner gouged the knife out. This is the best I could get it after working on it for quite a bit of time with some serious sandpaper. I had to remove some serious material to get it like this and it's still got those vertical scratches in the blade, but it looks so much better than it does now. I haven't put a final polish on it. I just wanted to show the, the, the amount of work it took because those scratches were incredibly deep when it started out. And I, I'm just not going to go any further. I'm just going to put a final polish on it and uh, be quite happy with it. And you're just going to be able to see those scratches through the mirror font polish. This shield originally had red paint in the background around the cross. And it's very common to find these with the paint all gone just over the years. from knocking around in pockets and drawers. The paint just gets chipped off. Has an exposed awl which I love these kind of all. Some people call them the European style of all. These are the the are great to use as a scratch all for punching holes or making holes larger. And it's I really like the look of them, how they stick out. There's a little divot in the scales to make it easier to access. Has a four turn fluted corkscrew, which is pretty common. Uh, and when they switch to the uh, the newer the the newer model with the hidden rivets, they went briefly went to a five turn corkscrew and then later switched back to a four turn corkscrew with no fluting on it. It also has exposed rivets, as you can see, with a bird's eye rivet at this end, which means there's like a basically a washer or bushing around it with the rivet in the center. And if you look really close, you can see the line of the rivet in the center. I don't know if you can see. I can get it on camera, but that's why they're called bird's eye rivets because they resemble a bird's eye. So this has a secondary clip blade. And this blade's in relatively good shape. Like I said, I haven't polished this up. I kind of want to keep it in a somewhat original condition. I'm going to put a final polish on this one too. But uh, this one is pretty full. I, I believe this is the full length that it originally was. 82 millimeters is a very is a pretty short knife it's just about right at three and a quarter inches has this old uh warner style can opener which you know although they are originally designed to open the side of the cans as i mentioned in a previous video uh they later were people adapted to using them to open the top of the cans and they often issued pamphlets as was pointed out to me by tobias with the knives to show you how to use them in that fashion but it's got the nice cutout here so you can reach the tab easily and it has a good bit of tension i would say these tools have a pull of about five or six which in my book is pretty good i consider an eight to be 
an optimum hard pull. Anything above an eight is where it starts to get too hard to be comfortable to pull out, you know, and 10 would just be an absolutely nail busting nightmare. And anything below four is where I'm getting into weak territory where, it, where it's either worn out or just constructed poorly. Has a combination bottle opener screwdriver. And uh, the difference between these and the 95 millimeter models, visually they look the same, but one cue you can tell to in, in like photographs, say on an eBay listing, and there's my pet mouse mini, she decided to be a guest star tonight, um, is that you will see this area will be elongated and there will be a round sharpened area for stripping cables with. But... Again, this has a great snap to the tool. All the tools do on this. I, I feel that Wenger, when they switch to their, their modern style, I, I feel like they spe like specifically sought to s soften up the spring action because you, you'll notice that the, the later ones had nowhere near the snap of the older ones. And I think that was just a choice to make them seem like a smoother operation. Really, the springs do not have any effect on keeping the knife from closing. If you're good at pierce something with it and do it at the wrong angle, doesn't matter how strong that spring is. Your, long, your arm length adds too much of a long lever. You're just gonna overcome the spring and snap it back. And if your hand's in the way, you're gonna get cut. So springs are not meant as locks. They're just meant for safety while opening and closing a knife. Earlier knives just had friction, which would, would loosen up over time and basically have a free swinging blade. Um, some of the differences between this and the modern knives is in 1963, they changed to this design. Now in 1960, the Sportsman series kept a similar design with this with a plastic shield that had a color graphic in it that said Swiss with a crossbow. And, uh, but, all, but it had hidden rivets rather than the exposed rivets. And it was a, a longer length than this. They had a, a 95 millimeter length and an 85 millimeter length. In uh, 1963, they switched to this style, which frequently had a shackle on it. This is a little later, but this was, is very indicative of that style. So they switched to the hidden awl, which still has a cutout to access the nail nick. And... It's a nice long straight all. It doesn't work as good for reaming or punching. It's not really sharpened. It just kind of relies on coming to a point and having 90 degree edges. There's no real sharpness to this per se. Also, unlike a Victorinox reamer, this sits fully flush with the back spring. It does not stick out because they choose to give you access to the nail nick this way rather than having the nail nick on the inside like Victorinox. This one, as I mentioned earlier, this has the five turn corkscrew that they used for a few years. I don't know how long. Uh, it, it seems like on SackWiki, there's a preference for Victorinox because there's a wealth of Victorinox information and the Wenger information is quite lacking. It might just be that there's just not as much of it was documented back in the day and it's just harder to come across. And this one shows what their main tool set to switch to in 1963 and most of their knives instead of having a clip blade started to come with the, the nail file and i believe they were first before victorinox to include a nail file on their full-size knives i find this more useful than having a second blade personally for like everyday carry you know in outdoor situations i might prefer a second blade just so i have more you know another sharp edge to work with my main blade becomes dull or or if i want to use that for something i don't want to use the main blade for or vice versa but uh you know for general daily grooming and uh keeping from getting hangnails which was often a problem for me between playing guitar and bass and being an electrician my nails tended to take a beating from twisting wire nuts and playing bass and I would often get hangnails that could easily get infected and be quite irritating to deal with. So I like having a nail file on my knife. Uh, and, you know, even though I always carry a 58 millimeter, which has ones, I just like having it on my main knife. Now, this shows the Z or dog leg type can opener that they patented and released in 1963. It's even got a graphic on the side showing you how to use it. And this operates by you put the rim of the can in that notch right there. After piercing through, you pierce down and through the can just enough to get the blade which points up under it. And then you work the knife up and forward. I feel like they did kind of 
follow Victorinox a bit, it seems like they went to a lot of effort to have a forward operating can opener because I can't see why, you know, this, it works well enough. It's just a, it's just a very awkward design, but it does work well. I think the initial piercing is not quite as easy as the Victorinox, but it, it does work for what it does. And it's interesting that it cuts the can up rather than cutting down into the can. And then the screwdriver bottle opener tool looks about the same. At this point, they hadn't yet to develop their push to lock. So this just is basically the same as a Victorinox bottle opener screwdriver combo. And the one lacking thing that, that Victorinox went out with is that their can opener operates as a Phillips driver. And unless you had a dedicated backside Phillips on your, on your Venger, you just didn't have the ability to drive, you know, a Phillips screw. You just would have to have another tool for that or just be out of luck. But notice this has an, uh, I think it's aluminum. It's either aluminum or stainless steel, The uh, but it's actually a metal inlay, which by the 70s, they had switched to this kind of emblem, which is their embossed emblem, which is like a sheet of aluminum that's anodized with the cross uh, etched out in the middle of the anodization. And uh, in 73, about thereabouts, they switched to this kind of can opener, which then they made slightly larger in 1976 and continued with until their end. So that is just a little bit of history on the original Wenger Swiss Army knives. I love this knife. The, the 82 millimeter and 84 millimeter models are my favorite models. I just think they're the most carryable. I really enjoy using them and, uh, I look for these anytime I can find them. They're highly sought after and, uh, you know, people pay high money for them much more than I'm usually willing or able to pay. So I try to get lucky once in a while and find what snatch one up when somebody lists it, not realizing what they have. And sometimes I get lucky and sometimes I don't, but that's just the way she goes sometimes, isn't it? Um, anyway, I want to thank, uh, my pet mouse, Minnie, for deciding to show her face on camera finally. I was kind of hoping she would come out. She's allowed to come out of her cage whenever she wants, so she just comes and wanders around on my desk and all around once in a while. And then she goes home when she gets tired of running around. So, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, and I'm going to try to put out videos at least twice a week and more when possible. I'm kind of taking a break from buying Swiss Army Knives. I'm uh, working on saving up some money to buy a new bass guitar, so I kind of got to pick one or the other. I can't afford to be buying a Swiss Army knife every other day and then also have money to buy a few hundred dollar bass guitar. So I might slow down for a little bit, but I've got quite a back stock of knives to work with, so I'll still be putting out videos. Just probably going to take a month off from uh, buying new knives, which as Tobias has uh not so jokingly talked about is easier said than done because the temptation is strong, especially when that eBay app is so an Etsy or so quickly of accessed on the phone. It's almost habit. You know, I think, Oh, I'm not going to go on eBay today. And then five minutes later, I find myself, you know, five pages deep in eBay looking for old Swiss army knives again without even realizing it. Anyway, everybody have a good night. Take care. And I'll see you on the next one.